Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at adding drop shadows inside of Layout. So, Layout itself doesn't have a drop shadow command where it just, you know, like in Illustrator or something like that, where just put a little darkened rectangle underneath it. Um, but we recently had interior designer Camilla Lopez on our fireside chat webinar and she showed some stuff that she she does some awesome amazing cool looking stuff inside of layout and i just got inspired to play around with how you could add shadows inside of layout so there i know i know you can actually turn on shadows for uh, a model you bring in from sketchup that is absolutely an option and we'll talk about that but uh, there's some other options too so i want to show those so let's go ahead and hop in right now okay so i have this little just a simple design vignette here. Um, all I did, so I imported this. I did go in here and uh, go to style and turn the background off. So it originally was on this gray background. I turned that off. So now it's all on top of white. This is actually pretty important because uh, when you go in and you start adding elements to kind of bump up your model, you want to be able to see them. So uh, we're going to be putting model or elements behind the actual model. So having a clear background, an invisible background, is important. So if you start doing this with your regular white background and stuff's disappearing, it's because that background is still visible, uh, maybe just the same color as the page. So uh, first thing, we're going to look at what Camilla did. So Camilla, her, her style was very, very uh, illustrative. So she had uh you know like some parallel projection vignette kind of stuff and um looked like she was doing a mood board so it's a bunch of like flat panels sitting on top so one of the things she did was she just took something like this and just put a drop shadow on it just like it was sitting like, like this was a 2d piece cut out and laid on the page uh really cool so all, all she did kept it super simple she went and grabbed a line that line had a stroke she used a, like a light gray color and a big you know, uh, we'll say like a 16 point line and then just came in here and just drew some lines around the edge like and then I will select that line, arrange, send it back and literally like that simple bumps an element up off the page. Like just, just that was, you know, <laughs> two lines and it's done and it was it was one of those moments where i just kind of it was kind of an aha moment like whoa that was easy that was simple and it is it's super cool and it's it looks a little weird with this vignette because i expect this vignette to be in 3d and sit on the page with a little more shadow but for some of the other things she was doing like she came in and uh you know maybe created a circle like this and this circle was a, a pattern example so um i'll go ahead and you know set my stroke back black down to like one point and then we'll fill it with a pattern um so something like that yeah that's fine so we have something like this one of the things we could do is i could take it option copy it over here and then take this one in the back and just go you know fill it with just a gray stroke off and you know then i get a simple drop shadow underneath that something like that so same idea here whereas if it was a 2d element sitting on the page that's kind of of what she's going for there so i decided to play that a little bit more right so i'm gonna go ahead and delete that and we're just gonna bump that up i'm gonna grab my line tool again this time i turn the stroke off put the fill on and now i'm just going to trace the outside of my vignette so i'm just going to use these points you can see i am working in uh, a rastered image because it is more performant uh, obviously one of the questions we get a lot how do i make sketchup work fast or how to make layout work faster leaving your model set to raster is going to make a, for a quicker experience inside layout all right so there we go just trace it around and now i could take it so i just selected it i select that shape i just drew and now with my arrow keys i'm just going to tap right a couple times and then maybe down a couple times and now same thing right click arrange send it back now a simple again super simple drop shadow on there this is kind of cool because 
one of the things I can do with this is, is once I have it in here, it's just a shape, right? So if I want to go from a drop shadow to maybe like a more realistic shadow, like this is actually casting a shadow on the ground, I can actually grab the control points and reshape that shape. So it looks like it's actually falling on the ground. So pretty cool. Again, super easy, super simple, just with a shape inside of layout. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And I'm going to come over and select this model and I'm going to go turn my shadows on. Okay, so obviously this is an option too. If I want to actually see the shadows on the ground as they would exist in the model, I could turn that on. Now, this obviously not a bad option. One of, There's two things about this that I personally don't love. One, no matter what you do, turning on shadows is more intensive. Every time I have to calculate this, so if I move the model or whatever, if I make any changes to the model, it's going to recalculate the shadows. Not ideal, probably not something I'll do a lot, but I don't necessarily want these internal shadows, right? So I have, so this wall is now casting a shadow. Sumela is casting a shadow up onto the fridge. I don't necessarily want all those shadows. Maybe all I want is this drop shadow. So here's, here's kind of a cool way to use what we just did before in a different way. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this corner right here and I'm going to zoom in. I'm not going to have click point or, or points to actually snap to, but as I zoom in here, you can see I can just click to the corners of this actual shadow and go back like this. I'll pull it in like that and then take that right back to the start. And now I can take this, arrange, send to back, and then I can actually come into the model and turn that shadow off. So again, light performant model because I'm not calculating shadows or anything like that. And I'm also not casting any shadows inside my model. My model's all lit up like I want it to be, but I still get that accurate drop shadow behind. So just a couple of quick options on how you can use just the line tool, the regular old line tool and some shape styles to create drop, drop shadows inside of layout. So if you haven't seen Camilo Lopez's session, um, I'll link to it down in the description. Uh, at this point, when this comes out, this will have been a few weeks ago, but it was a great session. If you do any interior design, if you do any work in layout for that matter, check it out. It was a, an amazing resource. I'm going to be coming up with some additional videos based on her content because she just had such good tips on how to get the most out of layout. Um, this one, like I said, really simple, just an easy way to use the tools that are already there to kind of bump up your modeling or, or bump up your output with your layout. Um, let us know what you think. If you like the video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe, we'll create several videos a week and be notified of each and every one of them. If you subscribe, most importantly, they'll leave us a comment. Let me know what you think of this tip. Let me know if you have other layout tips. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.